so this new s24 uh, uh samsung that was just released has the snapdragon 8 gen 3 phenomenal chipset phenomenal really enjoy it it's very very powerful has not overheated yet <laughs> um but and it's very battery efficient right very very battery efficient but seems like it, well it doesn't seem like it was just released and now we have a sneak peek of what's in store for the next generation snapdragon chips so we got a little info on the new upcoming next year's flagship devices in the year after so we got 2025 information on snapdragon's flagship cpu the snapdragon agent 4 and 2026 flagship snapdragon cpu the snapdragon 8 gen 5 nice and small chip very powerful right so it says um the cores and clusters how this is built of the two processors amongst other things um it will have the same cpu cluster now i'm assuming uh, same as the 8 Gen 3 is probably just going to be more powerful and more efficient. Both are said, meaning the Gen 4 and Gen 5 Snapdragon 8 series, both of them utilize the same 2 plus 6 CPU cluster um, that you see in the Snapdragon, the current Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Oh no, I apologize. So this current Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is using a 5, what's the thing, is that right? A Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is using a 5 plus 3 plus 1 CPU cluster. That makes sense because I reported uh, last week that they were not going to be using a prime core anymore. So the new Snapdragon 8, 8 Gen 4 and Gen 5 is going to be on a 2 plus 6 CPU cluster instead of a 5 plus 3 plus 1 prime core CPU clusters that's in the current Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, what does that mean in layman's terms? I mean, not much. I mean, it should be more efficient. Look, they know what they're doing, obviously, so they know the best route, uh, best road that they want to go down as far as how they construct them. Um... It says Qualcomm is planning to go the MediaTek route with its two upcoming processors. The company might ditch the efficiency cores altogether. As a previously rumor stated, the 8 Gen 4 is said to bring improved efficiency though. Now that Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 and 8 Gen 5 will feature a different CPU cores, the 8 Gen 4 is said to use the Phoenix cores while the 8 Gen 5 will utilize the Pegasus CPU cores. So how that works basically is you'll have certain cores like the 8 Gen 3, the current 8 Gen 3. It's got a 5 plus 3 plus 1 CPU cluster. So they'll have basically five main cores. You'll have three efficiency cores and you'll have one prime core so the the first set of five uh, uh cores is the um handles your intermediary uh processes on your device the three efficiency cores handle the device like when it's um when it's like this when the screen is off or when the all um, always on display is on when there's not much going on when it's charging overnight while you're asleep those three cores will take over and do all the processing. Very, very little power used with those efficiency cores. That's why they're called efficiency cores. And then the that plus one core, so the five plus three plus one, that one final remaining core is the performance core. That one's like turbocharge core. So whenever you're gaming, whenever you're probably shooting 4K, 8K video, that's the core, that's the basically the turbo booster where uh, that handles all the super, super um, high demand processes that put a lot of stress on your phone. Um, so it's interesting to see that they are switching it up, but like as I mentioned earlier, look, they've 
they had got a long history of making uh, really solid chips. So they obviously know what they're doing, right? Um, what other news do we have? Okay, here we go. Um, the Agent 4 will be manufactured using TSMC's 3 nanometer process. The Gen 5 will be util utilizing the uh, Samsung's 2 nanometer process. Lord have mercy. So the nanometer is basically like the foundation of the chip. Uh, as as I kind of described these chips, if you can imagine a house being built, um, the foundation uh, is the nanometer. <laughs> Uh, that's like the foundation of the home which is the base of the chip how basically how big it is nano is small meter is is length or distance so that just goes to tell you now when they reduce the size when they go when they when they go from it seems like every kind of we've kind of gotten to a slowdown right because i remember when these things used to be like 14 nanometers then the next year it'd be 13 then the year after that, they moved down to 12, and then 11, and then a 10, then 9. Well, we've been, I was wondering like a couple years ago, damn, they're going to have to hit a stale point because there's no way they're going to go like 3, 2, 1, 0 nanometers because then there would be no CPU, right? So we've been on 3 nanometers for probably two years now. Um, and it looks like we'll probably be on 2 nanometers for probably two or three years. That's the next step in the uh, process foundation of these chips. And obviously can go down to one, I'm assuming. I'm not a chip designer. Um, and obviously you can't go to zero. Now when you reduce the nanometers, when you reduce the foundation of these chips, it gets smaller, right? So technically the efficiency gets better because if you think of engines, if you think of a big truck engine and a little car engine, the little car engine is more efficient. Meaning if you translate that back to technology, um, it'll run, typically it'll run, I say typically, it'll run cooler, it's smaller, more efficient. Now on the flip side, with every generation, these are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but more powerful and more powerful and more powerful. So when does that on the chart graph, when do those intersect and it become a problem? Because you have to include heat dissipation, right? The higher performing, just like in a Formula One engine, if you crank it up all the way, it's going for a long, long time. You redline it, it's going to overheat and it's going to damage the engine. Similar to these, you don't want the pro the chip, your device to overheat. So when you have a smaller foundation, it's harder to dissipate the heat, which is why you see uh, more companies like OnePlus um, and Samsung increase their cooling systems, whether it's OnePlus's vapor chambers or Samsung increased the cooling efficiency inside here by 91% over last year. Um, and that's for a reason. That's because these chips are getting smaller, more powerful, and when you have power, you get heat. Heat is no good, so you need to get rid of it. And their R&D teams have found really, really genius ways to get rid of that heat, basically. So um, I'll keep an eye on this. I know this is like super nerd. <laughs> Uh, I really nerd out on this stuff. Um, so I know it may not interest a lot of viewers, but it, I'm glued to the stuff. So, um, well, it'll be a long, we'll keep an eye on this for a while because I, as I mentioned, they're going to be on three nanometers for another year or two. Well, I guess for another year. And it looks like they're going to utilize Samsung's two nanometer process after that. And uh, we shall see what happens. I can't wait to see what they have up their sleeve. I'm really, really, really liking this 8 Gen 3 chip. It's it's really good. It's really good. So uh, we're going to do benchmarking tests. I'm going to upload those videos probably tomorrow. 
do some performance testing with these and uh, stay tuned check our videos out tomorrow on the performance end of this 8 gen 3 and i'll show you what uh what this chip can handle